Alright, time for part 2. Go watch part 1 if you haven't already done that, where we talk about the actual combustion of the fuel, but today we'll talk about what speeds this engine likes to run at, and how this is connected to the wheels. There are certain RPMs where the engine is able to output the most power. When it's spinning too slow, the engine doesn't have the momentum to pull enough air in, and when it spins too fast, the engine simply can't get enough air in through its intake. This means for maximum power, the engine needs to stay at around the same speed, the power band, but there's an issue with that. This is usually a couple thousand RPM, which is way faster than any train, but also trains need to, you know, change their speed. So how can we make this work? Here the engine is spinning at its own speed. And this green box is the transmission. On the other side of it is the connection to the wheels. And the wheels are able to spin much slower than the engine. Thanks to the transmission. Alright, let's start with the simplest type. Diesel mechanical. This is very similar to what you'd find in a car. The engine is mechanically connected to the wheels, and by using gears, we can transfer the power but change the speed. When we connect differently sized gears, for every time the big one rotates, the smaller one needs to rotate more. This means if we connect the motor to the small gear and the wheels to the big gear, the engine can spin way faster at its most efficient speed, while the wheels spin slower at the speed of the train. And we can change the sizes of the gears we're using to help the train operate at different speeds. To change the speed of the train without drastically changing the speed of the engine, the only diesel mechanical trains in the UK though are the diesel Civities and the 172 and a few shunters. Now, there's quite a few issues with this. For locomotives, the mainline ones that is, the amount of force from this one engine is huge, and the gears need to be strong enough to transfer this, but that would make them very big and heavy. In fact, probably heavier than the entire loco. So this type of transmission is largely only for shunters and DMUs which have lots of smaller engines, meaning that the gearboxes they have don't need to be as heavy. So that's diesel mechanical trains. Now on to the next type, diesel hydraulics. Most UK DMUs are this type. I'm getting tired of talking so I'm gonna get someone else to talk about this. Instead of physically connecting the engine to the wheels, we use, well, hydraulics, which is basically just a liquid. Liquids are quite hard to compress as they're quite dense, like me, so we can transfer energy through them. So let's get a container, fill it with liquid, probably some type of oil, and connect the turbine to the engine inside the liquid. This is the impeller. This will spin the liquid and force it to the outside of the container, where it hits and spins another turbine connected to the wheels before returning in the center of the container. In between these is the stationary component, the stator, and what this does is it changes the direction of the returning fluid, as it comes back to the impeller. It has blades that don't rotate which spin the returning liquid in the same direction as the impeller. This gives the impeller a little push, increasing the torque transferred through this connection that is a torque converter, and this is how hydraulic trains connect the engine to the wheels. Alright, thanks for that. Some trains have multiples of these for use at different speeds, and we can fill and drain them as needed. But we can also change the angle of the blades. This is much lighter than a mechanical transmission, and it can provide smooth speed changes. Anyway, that's a diesel hydraulic, but we've been mostly talking about DMUs. What sort of transmission are the big locos using, or even the higher speed diesel trains, like the Voyagers, IETs, or even HST? That would be diesel electric. Alright, we've got electricity involved now, what's up with this? As we talked about in the train sounds video, electric trains can be very precisely controlled, and also electric motors give much better torque, and have almost no moving parts. But of course, we don't have wires and third rail everywhere, so what if instead of a power station, we just used the diesel engine as a generator. So if the diesel engine spins a magnet inside coils of wire, we generate single phase AC power. Where the electrons in the wire move back and forth, we then run this through a rectifier to get DC current where all the electrons move in the same direction. On some older trains, we just feed this DC current straight into DC motors. However, for recent 
reasons I'm not going to get into in this video, AC motors are much better, so using transistors, we can artificially create three-phase AC, basically AC current but three times at once, and this feeds into the electric motors on the wheels. I'll go into more detail on this in a dedicated video on electric trains. Subscribe so you don't miss out on that, and leave a like while you're down there. Anyway, Diesel electrics are much more reliable, as they have very few moving parts outside of the engine. But also, diesel electrics are the most fuel efficient, as hydraulics lose power in the slight compression of the liquid, and mechanicals don't have continuous transmission, which is why diesel electrics are so common for basically every locomotive and faster diesel train, and is why on some trains you can hear the electric sound. even when they're running on diesel. Anyway, that's all the transmission types, and I'll see you next time.